Hey guys, welcome back to The Art of Craftsmanship. My name's Dustin, and today in the shop we're working on part five, the grand finale of our knife making build along. Now, I'm following along with the guys from Knife Talk Podcast and their build along, so if you're interested in knife making or just making in general, definitely go check them out at the Knife Talk Podcast. They do a really awesome show. So if you haven't already, I would definitely encourage you to go back and check out parts one through four of the knife making process. I try to go over each part in detail and try to talk a little bit about all the questions that I would have, try to cover those in the videos. But if there's something that you have a question about or you don't notice, definitely go in, leave me a comment. I'll do my best to go back and read all those comments and answer those specific questions. So today I'll be doing mostly handle sculpting and finishing uh, and then do the final sharpening. But first I want to get into just profiling this and I'll talk about how I'm going to do an, a Coke bottle shape handle and I'm going to make it feel really good and comfortable in the hand. Let's get started. <laughs> So my design for this handle will be a Coke bottle shape. So it'll be narrow at the top, it'll flare out in the middle in your palm, it'll come back to narrow again, and then it'll flare out at the bottom back out. And that just gives you a really good grip. It fits into your palm and it also fits at the end of your hand just to give you a good solid grip on the knife. So I'm gonna start out with uh, 5 8 wide at the top, then I'll measure out to an inch at the widest part, which is gonna be halfway from the top to the end. And at the end, it'll be an inch as well. And in between the two of them, it'll kind of flare in the middle, probably maybe back down to five eighths, maybe a little bit closer to half an inch. So that way you have a nice Coke bottle shape, just is designed, designed really well to fit into your hand and stay in there nice and secure. I'm using a French curve to draw out the curves between the middle of the handle and the end of the handle. I want a nice smooth transition there. And uh, you know, that's why we use these tools in the shop. They give us those curves that are gonna be the same every time. With my rough profile cut out, I'm ready to move over to the belts. And I'm gonna be starting off with 36 grit, which is a really rough belt, so just be careful if you're starting there. That's mostly just rough grinding. I'm gonna take kind of break down the angles, get it down to like a shape that I can work with. Then I'll move my way through higher grit, so 60 grit, 80, maybe 120, 220, up to 600 or so. I'll keep working my way up through the grits before I do the hand sanding.
Come on. This is a good one. I know I mentioned earlier that I was going to go through higher and higher grits on the belts, but the power that the belts have can sometimes just kind of take more material away than you want. And I like the shape of the handle right now. I've kind of refined it down to what I want. So instead of doing those grits on the belt, I'm just going to do them by hand. So I'm going to start with 220 and I'll just start shaping and smoothing everything out from there and work my way up through the higher grits. I'm going to finish sharpening the blade by using my stropping belt and I'll just use this with some polishing compound on it and just strop the edge to make it nice and sharp. Good pro tip, if you have uh, tools that you need to keep from rusting, I have a rag that I just keep soaked in WD-40, and I'm gonna use that to actually clean off this blade, clean off all the polishing compound, and then uh, we'll oil the handle up. This is the part we've all been waiting for, the final dip in boiled linseed oil. All right, guys, well, thank you so much. This turned out really, really nice. I'm super happy with the knife. I love these white liners against the handle material. It looks really beautiful and just makes the whole knife pop. Again, this was a 01 tool steel knife that I heat treated and ground all the bevels, uh, did a Scandi grind, and um, 
it just turned out really nice. You know, it was fun to be able to go and try out knife print and do that and kind of come up with a template on that end. And I really appreciate, you know, those guys for having that resource has been really cool. And also the guys from the Knife Talk podcast for doing this build along and follow along. It's just been a fun, a fun few weeks listening to their episodes and then following along with the steps uh, and trying to like do a different process and learn something new. Um, and for those of you who've been following along with us on Instagram, we really appreciate that. It's been really fun to see what you're doing and follow along in your process. We really want to build this channel as a community and something that you know we can all kind of you know grow together and learn and make things together so for those of you who've been following along there and posting I'm gonna shout a few people out uh, JH knife Jimmy heelhound 34 Ardale 88 dragonfly forge UK and housework thank you guys all for posting and following along and showing us what you've been doing it's been really fun to watch um, and if you're still building and you haven't put some stuff up or put pictures up, just definitely keep tagging us. Just tag us at the, uh, at the Art of Craftsmanship. We'd love to see that, and I'd love to see what you guys are doing and talk to you about it and shout you out and give you some advice, and I'd love to learn from what you're doing as well. It's been a fun few days, and you know this knife turned out really well. I'm super happy with it, and I'm even more happy with it because this is a present for my brother Devin behind the camera. Devin, you do an awesome job, and I really appreciate all the work you do. So there you go. This one's for you. <laughs> So thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.